ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद भगवद गीता एज इट इज ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupad chapter 2 text 58 yada sangharate chayam kurmanga niva sarvashah indriyani indriyarthe bhyas tasya pragya pratishtita one who is able to withdraw his senses from sense objects as the tortoise draws his limbs within the shell is to be understood as fully situated in knowledge for part the test of a yogi devotee or self-realized soul is that he is able to control the senses according to his plan most people however are servants of the senses and are thus directed by the dictation of the senses that is the answer to the question as to how the yogi is situated the senses are compared to venomous serpents they want to act very loosely and without restriction the yogi or the devotee must be very strong to control the serpents like a snake charmer he never allows them to act independently there are many injunctions in the revealed scriptures some of them are do nots and some of them are do's unless one is able to follow the do's and the do nots restricting oneself from sense enjoyment it is not possible to be firmly fixed in krishna consciousness The best example set here in is the tortoise. The tortoise can at any moment wind up his senses and exhibit them again at any time for particular purposes. Similarly, the senses of the Krishna conscious persons are used only for some particular purpose in the service of the Lord and are withdrawn otherwise. Keeping the senses always in the service of the Lord is the example set by the analogy of the tortoise who keeps the senses within This is near the beginning of Bhagavad Gita which is known as the basic the Bhagavad Gita is considered the basics the introduction in Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate the science of the topic of Bhagavan the supreme personality of godhead by which one is freed from material involvement that is described in Srimad Bhagavatam so there are many many topics to be discussed in Krishna consciousness and this one of controlling the senses is at the beginning or very near the beginning of the most basic treatises on spiritual knowledge actually before this krishna bhagavan establishes that the person the atma is different from the body and then this topic of the control of the senses comes in response to Arjuna's famous question about the sthita dhimuni what is the nature of a muni a wise thoughtful muni means a wise thoughtful uh, spiritually situated person sthita dhimuni one who is situated in, in intelligence So what what is his how do you recognize him stita pragya sakha bhasha samadhi stasya keshava stita dehi king prabhasha ita kimasi ita vrajita king how is it how do you recognize such a person uh, a person who's actually situated in in proper intelligence what are his symptoms how does he talk how does he walk how does he sit So in response Krishna describes the yogi who uh, his basic symptom is that 
he is in control of the senses. Now these are very basic topics. And there are so many topics to discuss. Uh, up to Prem and even beyond Prem. Well, there's nothing beyond Prem, but this is the topics of Prem, of pure love of Krishna. There are many topics to discuss within that category, various levels of love for Krishna. However, uh, without understanding this topic, one can't go any further, or it would be superficial to do so. Or, even if one is endeavoring to go further, uh, one should not falsely consider oneself uh, on uh, consider oneself uh, on a level where one doesn't have to think about controlling the senses or the mind uh, because lack of control of the senses is synonymous with not being Krishna conscious and it's not so easy to get free from the pushings of the senses. Atendriya priti vancha tare bale kam Krishnendriya priti icha dhare premana. The difference between prema or love of Krishna and lack of prema or material desire is this. When one is attached to personal sense enjoyment, that is called karma or material desire, which is explained by Bhagavan Krishna in Bhagavad Gita as the great enemy of the conditioned soul that binds us in illusion. And when one is fully uh, dedicated to serving Krishna's pleasure, that is called praying or pure love of Krishna. Now, uh, this distinction might not be so easy for us to make because... Oh, Already stopped because uh, for so many millions of lifetimes, and Adi Karma Phale, Hari Bhavaranavajale, since time immemorial, we have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. So we consider it and this to be a natural situation. Now. Uh, This material desire, karma, is compared to iron. I suggest you put some oil on that door so every time if people are coming in and out, a little oil would make less disturbance. So I that I Karma is compared to iron and prema is compared to gold. They're both metals. If one is blind, one cannot distinguish between the two. Although they're similar uh, in many ways, but one is very valuable and one is cheap. So if one is blinded by sense gratification, he may not be able to see the difference. They may seem to be the same. This is, uh, of course, an example comparing iron to sense gratification and gold to pure love of Krishna. But actually the difference is much, much greater. But the similarity is that they're both, both karma and prema desire, but one is for personal sense gratification 
and the other is for the pleasure of Krishna. But as long as one has even a modicum of material desire, then you cannot properly appreciate what spiritual desire is. Philosophically, we can understand and we develop, or we, we start to develop love of Krishna by the activities of bhakti, of shavanam, kirtanam, vishnu, smaranam, by all these activities. But uh, the actual experience of Prem comes from full surrender to Krishna. Now, that full surrender comes, how does that come? There's a process for that. And that's described or that's alluded to in the purport here by Srila Prabhupada, that there are many do's and do nots in devotional service. Things that we should do which help us to develop Baba Krishna and things that we should not do which, uh, because they inhibit our love of Krishna. They uh, bring us again into the atmosphere of personal enjoyment. So there are many of these. Uh, we have the, the, the basic rules. Uh, Srila Prabhupada has given us the most basic for those who want to be serious about Krishna consciousness and so that we should chant the holy names of Krishna at least 16 rounds every day. We should follow these four regulated principles, no meat-eating, no gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication. So there's the most basic do, is do chant Hare Krishna. The most basic do not, is do not eat meat, do not eat fish, do not eat eggs, do not take intoxication, do not gamble, do not indulge in uh, illicit sex. So all these rules are there, do's and do nots. Because if we do chant Hare Krishna, that will help us to develop praying, going through all the stages. Ado, Shraddha, Tata, Sadhu, Sangha, Tato, Narta, Nivriti, Syat, Tato, Nishta, Ruchis, Tata. It's going through Tato, Narta, Nivriti, Syat, Tato, Nishta, Ruchis, Tata. Yeah, so going through all the stages, the various stages, one comes to Krishna praying by by sadhana, which the most powerful uh, positive aspect is chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, if we simply don't eat meat, don't drink wine, and follow these principles, but we don't chant Hare Krishna, then we won't attain love of Krishna. On the other hand, if we do chant Hare Krishna, but we also break the principles, we also won't attain love of Krishna. So uh, chanting Hare Krishna is most important, but we also have to follow some principles. And apart from these most basic principles, there are many other principles which are given in the nectar of devotion uh, that we should follow. Yeah, we should add another one for the uh, modern age. Turn off your cell phones. <laughs> There are rules and regulations in the temple, such as one should not criticize others, one should not become angry at others, one should not praise others in the temple, one should not tell lies in the temple. Better not to tell lies anyway. But uh, the general idea, the general idea can be, it's the same principle, don't disturb unnecessarily, so cell phones off during Krishna Kata. Please. Everyone has a cell phone? So please take it out and switch it off. Off is better. There's also silent mode, but why? Anything so urgent? Then, yeah, just have it off better. So, uh, rules and regulations. Do's and do nots. These are two, uh, on one hand, the do's are activities which promote our attraction to Krishna. Do go to the temple. Do bow down before the deity. And don't 
associate with non-devotees. Don't uh, perform puja is one of the rules given in the nectar of devotion. Don't perform puja after eating hing. It's one of the rules. <coughs> there are many other rules given for deity worship in other shastras. Some there are so many <coughs> different rules. So do's and do nots. Now, for a pure devotee on the highest level, he may not observe these do's and do nots because he's already absorbed in pure love of Krishna. But for devotees on uh, the level, on not on that level, they haven't reached up to the perfectional level. Uh, following all these rules and regulations is essential. Once a devotee asks Prabhupada, how we how can we quickly develop love of God? And Srila Prabhupada said, follow all the rules and regulations. So many times devotees ask, how can we make advancement? Although it's, the process is quite clear, uh, we have to apply ourselves to it. This is Acharya Pasanam, worship of the Acharyas. The, the Acharyas in Parampara have given us various uh, rules and regulations to follow that will help us to become Krishna conscious. Now some devotees say, oh, I, what's all these rules that inhibits the feeling of bhakti? But the acharyas are not so foolish that they'll give us something that will inhibit bhakti. The rules are meant to uh, help us to develop bhakti. If we think that oh, all these rules, they, they, they just stop bhakti. That's actually an insult to the Acharyas to even think like that. Because the rules are to help us develop bhakti. Of course, it is a fact that if we become overly concerned with rules, just for the sake of rules, uh, that is an inhibition to bhakti. That is called niyama agraha. Being too enthusiastic for rules for rules' sake. But there's, yeah, this word niyamagra is given by Rupa Goswami as one of those, one of the factors that destroys bhakti. So one of them is being enthusiastic for rules simply for rules' sake. But niyamagraha can also be translated as niyama agraha, not to accept the rules. So uh, the rules should be accepted. But understanding the purpose behind them. Now, uh, quite often we see that devotees, or supposed to be devotees, they are not very serious about following all these rules. Uh, and often they cite two reasons for not following all the rules, which are genuine reasons for not following rules. One, or, or can be genuine reasons, one is time, place and circumstance. That one, adjustments may be made for time, place and circumstance. Just like for instance, uh, one should not eat meat. But if there's nothing else to eat, if one has to serve Krishna, then one, theoretically, one could eat meat, although Srila Prabhupada, when he said, I would rather die than eat meat. So, but theoretically, one could do so. To one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples, who was ordered by Srila Prabhupada to preach in Russia, Srila Prabhupada, he, but he didn't want to, and he was giving so many excuses, and he said, there's nothing to eat but meat there. And Prabhupada said, then eat meat but go and preach. In other words, he wouldn't accept any, Srila Prabhupada wouldn't accept any excuses. Actually, there are things to eat. There were things to eat other than meat, even in the communist days, but not much. It was a pretty limited diet. You could get by with vegetarian food. There are other uh, 
adjustments that one may have to make according to time, place and circumstance. Uh, just like uh, one may, generally devotees like to sing very loudly in kirtan, one should perform sankirtan. It's not a written rule, but it's an understood principle that one would like to sing very loudly and dance in kirtan, but then one may deliberately not do that in a country like the one we're in at present, uh, where we are surrounded by neighbors who are not very appreciative of that and might even call the police and have your visas cancelled and have you that means your jobs are lost. So time, place and circumstance according to time, place and circumstance one may adjust the rules and uh, maybe not follow some of the rules. Another uh, reason for not following a rule may be simply out of bhav or great feeling for Krishna a devotee may not follow a certain rule and Srila Prabhupada in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in Nectar of Devotion uh, I'm not sure but probably quoting from one of the previous Acharya's commentaries uh, he gives the example that it is forbidden to lie down in the temple of Krishna, but someone may do so out of great, someone who's a very advanced devotee, they may do so out of a sense of great familiarity with Krishna. If someone is in, a, in the mood of being extremely familiar with Krishna out of a very high standard of love of God, they may do so. But Generally, one would not do so. So one may cite feeling for Krishna. But the general rule is to follow the rules. That's why they're given. Because they help us to overcome sense gratification. And thus help us to become purified and advance to the stage of love of Krishna. Now, a problem with these, with our own selves is that uh, we tend to be lazy, especially in Kali Yoga, that is a prominent symptom. And we justify in our own minds, and maybe to others also, not following the rules. The actual reason is that we're not very serious, or uh, we don't want to follow properly, but we say, in the name of having great feeling for Krishna or in the name of time, place and circumstance where it's not really where it's not really necessary we don't follow a rule where we could follow it or we say uh, out of great feeling I'm doing it although actually to be on that level of great feeling is not very common so to imitate that means that we can, if we imitate that highly advanced level, then we can never come to the highly advanced level because we don't go through all the preliminaries we don't, uh, that are required to come to that level and we don't actually give up sense gratification, we just imagine that we have done so. A disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he gave an example of uh, of one Goswami or in Bengal the Goswami caste they used to be the uh, gurus of the Vaishnavas nowadays they're mostly all communists and uh, businessmen and all this kind of thing but the Gosw anyway one Goswami he himself cited an example of, the, of a highly advanced level of devotion, it's citing himself. In one lecture he gave, he explained how
he explained how uh, he had previously been at a lecture. He had left his home in the early evening and walked long distance. In those days walking was common, so he'd walk maybe 10 kilometers to give a lecture. So he was lecturing in the evening, and then suddenly it flashed in his mind that he had left the window open next to the deity. And uh, it was a winter night, so in the day it's pleasant, but in the night it's cold. So uh, it suddenly flashed in his mind that he would left the window open. So he, in the middle of the lecture, he just got up, left it in the middle, left all the people who had, who had come to listen to him, and got back as fast as he could to his home and closed the window and apologized to his deity and it was very cold so he made some nice hot tea and offered it to the deity and took it himself and this he cited as an example of highly advanced level of devotion so the author of this essay noted that this was a bogus example. He was feeling, first of all, if he was really had so much feeling for the deity, he wouldn't have left the deity alone in the first place. That's a rule of devotion that you just don't, if you have deities, you don't just say goodbye, see you later. Someone should be with the deity all the time. And uh, you don't offer tea. When Krishna says patram pushpam, when patram doesn't mean tea leaves. He says patram pushpam palam toyam. So put some tea leaves, leaves and water, put them together. No, tea, tea is not offerable to Krishna. And also you don't go around telling people about your own great... De I'm, here's an example of great devotion. Let me see all the... So many great devotees in Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates. But actually, I think I can give the example of myself. This is not devotion, to tout oneself as a great devotee. So, this is an example of someone who, they may have some bhav. He, he had some bhav, you could say, some feeling to leave in the middle of his lecture, leaving all the people uh, probably a little angry that they came to listen to him and he just left them. And wouldn't have got, he wouldn't have got his dakshina. He for, forwent his dakshina so he could rush home. But his whole understanding was uh, so very strange. So we cannot think that he was actually situated on the proper standard of devotional service. So uh, proper, yeah, proper understanding is required. Otherwise, Shuti Smriti Purana Adi Pancharatra Vidhimbina Aikantiki Hare Bhakti Udpata Yaiva Kalpate Devotional service that doesn't follow all the directions given in the Shastra. Uh, in the name of Bhakti, it's simply a disturbance in human society. Now, this Goswami who was lecturing, he was no doubt quite learned in those days uh, to be a, a religious lecturer. You actually had to be quite learned in Shastra. Nowadays, anyone can just bluff their way through. But in those days it was required to be quite learned and the public was, the public themselves were quite learned in many cases. So, uh, quite possibly he had even been trained in uh, Shastra to some extent, but his understanding, we understand from our Acharyas, was wrong because Atendriya Priti Vancha Tare Vale Kam. The idea of tea drinking is not for Krishna's pleasure, 
It's for my pleasure. We don't find that in the Ras Leela there's a tea break. There's no, no tea breaks in Raja Leela or any Leela. But this was introduced for sensual enjoyment. It's not what Krishna wants. It may be what we want and because it's what we want, we think, well, Krishna might like that also. If I like it, Krishna must like it. But that's, it's round the other way. We have to attune ourselves to what Krishna wants, and therefore the rules and regulations are there, because we don't know what, we might think we know what Krishna wants, but we don't know. We might think that because I like it, Krishna must like it, but it's, it's, it's not like that. It's what Krishna likes, that we should train our senses in accord with that, not to think that Krishna has to do what I want to do. And therefore, all these rules and regulations are there to help us to overcome our lower propensities. Because if we have even a little desire for sense gratification, that is... Uh, opposite to the spirit of pure devotion, that will block actual pure devotion. So, uh, it's good to discuss regularly these points from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, all the spectrum of Krishna consciousness, there's so many levels, so many great devotees, so many leelas, but uh, I, I see that Srila Prabhupada, he regularly lectures on these very basic topics because if the basis is solid then everything else can develop very nicely but if the basis is not strong then just uh, like the example of a building you can build a very elaborate beautiful building and it may look very nice but if the foundation isn't strong then it will soon crumble very soon but if the basis is strong then you can go up and up and up and up. You can build very nicely, very strong, solid building that will remain. So it's necessary for us to uh, understand these topics. Uh, because, especially um, in India, this bhakti cult, it is very widespread. But it's, it's spread widely, but the understanding of this principle, Krishnarte Akila Cheshta, everything should be performed for Krishna's pleasure. This is not very widespread. Or even if it is there, what Krishna wants is not properly understood. Just like this Gosai, this Goswami. He thought, I should do what Krishna wants, I should make him warm. But then exactly how Krishna wants that, he was very seriously mistaken. So, um, so that we don't get mixed up, our, our own personal desires don't get mixed up with what is required for serving Krishna. Uh, it is necessary to stay within the guidelines of the rules and regulations. We may think, well, I'll adjust it for time, place and circumstance. I'll adjust it because I don't need to follow this because I have so much feeling. But uh, that feeling, unless, just like we see all over India, people have feeling but no proper understanding. So many people will go to temples of Krishna. Guru Vayar, I was just there, just came from there yesterday. Tirupati, so many people are coming, calling out Govinda, that's very nice. That they're calling out Govinda, but then they're, they're not really serious to do what Govinda wants them to do. Rather, they're going to Govinda asking him to do for them what they want to do. So they're a long way from the actual conception of bhakti. So that is Srila Prabhupada's special contribution 
to the spiritual life of India, first of all, to revive the whole bhakti cult, uh, to make to popularize that and make people feel that bhakti is the best path, Krishna bhakti. So that even nowadays we find many people who are initiated in different sampradayas and they're impersonalists, but a lot. Nowadays, more and more, they're talking about bhakti and Krishna. It's all because of Prabhupada's preaching and his influence. Otherwise, where did that come from? But to uh, teach people what is actual pure devotion, free from personal desire, that is required. Otherwise, in India, mostly what goes on in the name of bhakti is, yeah, like that, for my own desire. Krishna, I love you very much. You love me, so do what I'm. I'm just like your child, so just like a parent does for the child, you give me whatever I love. Like. So we should be very careful not to uh, superimpose our personal desires in the name of bhakti. But rather, if we follow the rules and regulations under the guidance of uh, devotees who clearly understand these principles, then we can advance nicely in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, uh, it's very dangerous that we, the tendency is always to just water it down a bit and say, well, Krishna is very merciful. He knows I love him, so if I don't follow this or that, he'll, he'll understand. But then uh, if, if we do love him or if we are serious to uh, develop love for him, then we'll, we'll follow the path given by the Acharyas, which is meant for developing that love. They've given us the process. And if we're not serious to follow that, that suggests that we're not actually very serious. To talk is cheap. We can say we love Krishna, but that has to be seen in our activities. So, Hare Krishna. I'll not say more about this now. It's a basic principle, which if we can understand then our progress in Krishna consciousness will go very nicely. If we don't understand this, or if we cheat ourselves by pretending that we are on a better level than we actually are, then we can't actually advance. Even if it seems that we are doing so, it might seem that we have so much feeling for Krishna, just like the Goswami. He thought himself, and probably... Others who were listening to him thought, oh, what a great devotee. He ran back to his own home, closed the window, gave the deity tea. But it's uh, because it's not properly guided by the uh, rules and regulations of Shastra given by the Acharyas, then even though he thinks that he's being greatly devotional, it's, all, it's mixed up with his own personal desire for sense enjoyment. Drinking tea is it's not the world's greatest crime, but it's got nothing to do with devotional service. It's, it's a very minor, uh, it's very minor compared to highly sinful activities, but it's not in the line of devotion. So it is an obstruction on the path of devotion. Yeah, any question about this, please? Then how we came to know that what Krishna likes actually? How can we know what Krishna likes? It's given in Shastra. But uh, we are not uh, read that. And then, uh, then with that, you're not reading. Then you follow the Acharyas. The Acharyas, <coughs> the Shastras are there. We're meant to. We're meant to know. Like in daily life. If we're going to develop love of Krishna, then we should know what what is that. What is that love of Krishna? We should know what Krishna wants. Oh. No. 
It won't be recorded at all. <laughs> Maybe in just in this, because I've put this in the wrong one. Yeah, in daily life? Likes, uh, How do we know what Krishna likes? And then we have to uh, see from Shastra and see what the Acharyas tell us. You can see Bhakti Rav Thakur's song. Shukta Shakadi Bhaji Nali Thakushmanda Dali Dalna Dugda Tumbi Dadi Mocha Khanda All these items are given. Krishna likes that. The full standard in a place like this you may not be able to do, not very likely. So you have to do the best you can. But therefore I recommend also, don't mind, don't, don't take up deity worship in the, in the proper in the proper way, you can't do it. So, if you chanting Hare Krishna, anyone can do any place, any time, any circumstance. Therefore, it's the Yuga Dharma. But deity worship, there are so many rules and regulations. If you can't do it properly, then uh, deity worship is such that if you can't do it properly, it's better not done at all means if you can't follow the basic rules and regulations. means that everyone can keep some... What Prabhupada recommended was that we keep the uh, Guru Gauranga altar. That was the standard in this when Prabhupada was present. If there were no Brahmin-initiated devotees, then they'd have a picture of the Panchatattva and a picture of Srila Prabhupada. And they'd worship. That was in this center with full-time devotees. And they'd offer their bhog like that and do arati twice a day like this. And later when they come up to the standard, then Srila Prabhupada would install deities. Even in his own centers, where there were Brahmin-initiated devotees present, Prabhupada sometimes refused to install the deity. So then and not up to the proper standard. Although in Australia, famously, he installed the deity, even though he said no one's up to the standard. Now, what we want, what we think we can do for making advancement, can actually be an obstacle if we don't do it properly. Because uh, in deity worship, there's much consideration of offenses. Hmm. Anything else? Hmm. All right, then, we'll finish. You, you mentioned that one should then follow according to the Acharyas. Mm -hmm. In a circumstance when somebody starts associating with, a, with an individual, thinking him to be an Acharya, thinking him to be a Guru, but given that it's commonplace now that such individuals may not be correctly practicing themselves. Mm -hmm. So the question that is frequently asked is whose fault is it? Because there is an inquisitive bhakta who wants to practice. An inquisitive devotee wants to practice. He comes in contact with someone who's basically a cheater, is what you're saying. Yes, right. Then? And as a result... As a result, his bhakti progress. is spoiled. Well, uh, we learn from Chaitanya Charitamrita, summarizing the principle given in Bhagavatam and other shastras. Brahmanda Brahmite Kono Bhagivan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. One who is very fortunate, by the mercy of Krishna, he gets a guru. By the mercy of guru, he gets Krishna. Or by the mercy of guru and Krishna, he gets the seed of devotion. So, one who is actually sincere, they should get a proper guru. Uh, 
one may be sincere and come in contact with someone who's not sincere. But then if he's actually sincere, uh, then he should be able to uh, note the difference. Srila Prabhupada, sincere, this word is often used to mean someone who's very convinced about something and determined about it. So once a devotee asks someone about the position, asks Srila Prabhupada the position of a sincere atheist, and Prabhupada said, how can that be a sincere atheist? It's, it's like saying an honest thief. So Srila Prabhupada didn't, one could say, in general English usage, one could say a sincere atheist. That means he really believes it, and he's really convinced about it, and he really thinks it's best for human society, but Srila Prabhupada didn't accept that. He's, because he, Srila Prabhupada gave the idea that if one is actually sincere, then uh, he won't adopt ideas which are so uh, opposite to the, the actual situation of the jiva to serve Krishna. So, this principle separates the sincere from the insincere. Atendriya priti vancha tare bale kam krishnendriya priti icha dhare premana. If one desires personal sense gratification, that is uh, material. If one desires to satisfy Krishna, that is spiritual. Now, in the, in the name of devotional service, there may be elements of personal desire, but that is a contamination on the process. So if someone is preaching Krishna consciousness, but is using that as is possible to exploit others, that's possible, uh, or he's directing his followers towards sense gratification, then one who's sincere, they will discern that and leave that person. Or it may be that someone is practicing sincerely, but by some offense or whatever, bad association, they slip from that platform. So then one should not continue to follow them. As long as they're following, follow. And they're not following, don't follow. One has to, to attain Krishna one has to be very sincere, follow very sincerely. Ma me kam sharanam raja. It's a great demand from Krishna to surrender to him fully. Anything else? Well, according to the definition of sincerity, uh, one would require to be purified to be sincere. One would require to be purified to be sincere. Is some level of initial purity is required. Yeah. And One has to be actually uh, desiring to be free from, even without knowing the language, the terminology, the science of devotional service, even without knowing all of this, there should be a, a, a basic inclination to, or, or understanding that this material world is not my place. There must be God, I must try to serve Him. That should be there. Yeah? And is that adequate to take you forward? Is that adequate to take you forward? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to make this, this step. If one is uh, sincerely desirous to go forward, then Krishna will help. What I'm unable to understand is that there is contamination, mm. and that contamination obstructs your progress. Contamination obstructs our progress, yes. And you cannot progress until you remove that contamination. You can't progress until you remove that so contamination. So you have to take up the process for removing the contamination. Right? There should be an, an, an initial desire for spiritual advancement. And based on that, uh, one 
comes, uh, places oneself under the guidance of persons adequate to do that. And there's testing. One, uh, if one's actually sincere, he won't go to someone who's uh, grossly insincere. But uh, even if one thinks one has found a sincere person, we should look and see for some time. Yeah? One should look and see. One should, uh, it's stated that one should see the character of the guru. One can also see the character of the followers, those who are seriously following. What is their position? <coughs> but one has to make a step. It's a risk. But you could say it's a risk, but if you don't take that risk, then for certain you're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> and stay in this material world. <laughs> 